Hope you're ready for this. I'm gonna show you how I paint a ukulele. So before we do anything, we have to do a little bit of prep work. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a trigger warning here that if you don't like watching instruments being minorly destroyed, you might want to skip ahead. <laughs> First things first, we need to remove the strings so we don't have anything in the way. Real quick, if you are new here, my name is Sarah, and my aim is to help you create art in any medium, digital or traditional. I alternate between traditional and digital mediums with every video to give you a variety of art content so you can see the benefits of both of them. So if you like what you see, consider hitting that subscribe button. Once the strings are off, we are going to sand down the finish so that our primer has something to stick to. You don't have to get everything off, just enough to give it a little bit of a rough surface. Now I'm going to tape all the edges that I want to protect so that my cleanup at the end is much, much simpler. gesso for my primer and I gave this two coats of gesso. I've seen so many people paint other surfaces like instruments or other objects before and it blows my mind how many people skip this preliminary step, especially when it's something that has a potential to have a lot of rubbing. These preliminary steps will guarantee the best chances of your painting lasting and not just flaking off or chipping off over time. Once my gesso is dry, I'm going to sketch the design onto the ukulele. This is for a friend and she really liked the idea of having a wave but with this silhouette island in the back. Now it's time to set up our workspace. I try to set up everything I think I could possibly need so that I don't have to stop in the middle. Acrylic paint dries pretty fast, so I don't want to get caught at a time where I really need to blend my next color and I need something else. As I put a little bit of each color onto the plate, I already know this is going to be a challenge because I don't currently have a bright yellow and I wanted to get this painting done, so all I had was yellow ochre. Now with this idea of a sunset and really wanting those deep sunset colors, we were in for quite the ride. So the colors weren't exact, but spoiler alert, I was pretty happy with the final result. So this is the part where I realized that I forgot to hit the record button. So I lost the first half of the painting process. So I am extremely sorry. And I hope you continue to watch because there's still a lot more here. I'm really sorry. Here's the rest of it. mix as many colors as I think I will need and keep my palette moist with a spray bottle and then I'm not spending too much time mixing as I go. I was pretty disappointed that I missed this first part recording because the sky was my favorite part of this whole painting but you'll still get to see the wave and the island which is fine but I really hate it when recording doesn't go as planned. Tech problems, gotta love them. Shockingly, most of my work that I do outside of being a wife and mom is primarily in tech, specifically building websites. So you would think the tech part wouldn't be such an issue for me, but I think I've had issues with three of my last four videos. Next time, peeps. Next time, I will conquer this beast. reference image and I'm basically doing my best to imitate the colors and the effects of the sunlight shining through the water. I think my favorite thing about this painting is the transition in the water from this orange color into the blues. There's just so much color in this whole painting but I feel like they all work so well together. That is something that I've noticed in that when I started painting with more traditional colors like alizarin crimson, phthalo blue, yellow ochre, the depth of color is so different. Um, then when you find these acrylic paints that are in like primary blue or primary yellow, 
I find that especially crimson, phthalo green, and phthalo blue, yellow ochre, they really have this earthy feel to them, and they just work really well in natural settings. Some of the more vibrant colors that I've used were Lake Blue and the more magenta one is called Rouge. I was experimenting quite a bit with the fan brush because I really liked the texture it produced. I feel like this painting didn't really start coming together until I added this really dark color which was a mix of black and crimson. When this came in, suddenly there was more contrast and more interest. Things were good. Although I purposely saved the island for last just because it seemed like the most fun. This painting was a little out of my comfort zone for several reasons, so as much as I would like to give you more of a step-by-step -step commentary on this, I really can't because so much of it was just trial and error. Something else that's strange about uh, these colors is that they appear so dark um, that you almost can't tell what color they produce when you mix them with a lighter color, especially with the phthalo blue. It's really easy to overdo phthalo blue. <laughs> You may also notice that I painted over that top part of the waves several times because I just couldn't get something that I was happy with. Partially because I was guessing what should have been there since the photo kind of cut that part off and I was trying to balance what I think was realistically there with what I thought looked good artistically. Even when I have a reference, I will always tweak things if something blends in too much or a line is crossing over at a weird spot. Never be afraid to deviate from your reference. Once it has had some time to dry, then I will remove the tape. That's the most satisfying part of the whole process. Between the tape and this plastic edge, it makes the paint sit kind of funny on the edge and it just looks messy. So to fix this, I use an X-Acto knife and just shave away the edge to make it a bit more of a rounded edge. Um, this will make it less likely to chip in the long run. For my final finish, I've taped up my edges again and blocked the sound hole and I am spraying a clear coat and this will give it just a beautiful glossy shine. And here's the final result. If you like this video, please, please give it a thumbs up and check out the link in the comment section to vote on what you would like to see next on my channel. So I just wanted to add a quick note to this video. As I was editing this video, I passed 2,000 subscribers. So I just wanna thank everyone for helping me meet that milestone and just thank you for this wild ride that this YouTube journey has been. Uh, there's lots more to come. I hope you keep watching and Thanks again, so I will see you all in the next video.